Good morning. If you would, go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 11. We're going to finish up Jesus' teaching here on prayer. When his disciples said, teach us how to pray, Luke chapter 11 is where we see Jesus' response to how we should pray. We're going to look at the last two verses. Now, I'm going to start out by reading the New Living Translation. It'll be pretty close to, to, your, um, to your version, but let's go ahead Before we do that, as you're turning to Luke 11, I do want to give kind of a summary of where we've been up to this point. Jesus, first of all, said that when we pray, we must pray out of desperation. We need God. Secondly, we need to pray out of desire, that we want God. Thirdly, we must pray out of boldness, that we seek God. And today we're going to look at in these two verses, verses 11 through 13, that we are to pray out of confidence that we trust God. We trust God. Let's go ahead and look at what Jesus said in Luke 11, verses 11 through 13. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give to those who ask him? How much more will your heavenly Father give to those who ask him? So when we come to God in prayer, we come to God in need. And what Jesus is saying is that we can trust God, just like earthly fathers would not give their kids a snake when they ask for fish, or a scorpion when they ask for an egg, God, God won't give us any less than absolutely what we need. God will give us good gifts when we come to him in prayer. That's what Jesus is teaching here, that we can trust God. When we pray, we can say, your will be done, God, because I trust you. I come in confidence that you can see what I can't see. That, God, you have an upper story that is best for me. How many times have we prayed for something and said, God, this is what I want? And God was faithful to answer that prayer, but he answered the prayer with what we needed instead of what we wanted. True? True. Praise God that he knows what's best and we can come in confidence. But the good gifts that he gives us when Jesus said that How much more will your heavenly Father give to those who ask him? Now, I purposely took something out of that scripture. I will put it in, don't worry. Okay, what did I leave out? What does God give us when we come to him and ask for good things in prayer? Anybody read that? The Holy Spirit. That's not what we're thinking. Most of us are thinking, when I come and ask God for health, God's going to give me health. When I come and ask God for comfort, God's going to give me comfort. When I ask God for peace, God's going to give me peace. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, when you pray and you come to the God who gives good gifts and you say, God, here is my need, God's response is the Holy Spirit. God's response is the Holy Spirit. Now, some of us are like, whoa, whoa. What just happened? What was that? Well, let me share with you why this is such a big deal. This revelation is huge. Let's look at that scripture one more time. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if you ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people... Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I want to look today that Jesus ends this teaching on prayer. That what is the greatest gift that God gives us in prayer? The answer is the Holy Spirit. The answer is the Holy Spirit. So I want to look at that today by looking at three Ways this gift transforms our confidence in prayer that we can trust God. The first is this the Holy Spirit indwells in us. Acts 2:38 says that we are to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins and receive the gift of what? The Holy Spirit. So when we get into the water 
and we give our life to Jesus and we are made one with Jesus' death and resurrection, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't just lay on us like a coat. The Holy Spirit doesn't come and tap us on the head. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. That's the promise here. That God sent Jesus to die for us. He sent Jesus to be that that sacrifice so we could be saved. Then Jesus said, it's good that I leave. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will come. You see, so many times we look at it and say, yes, God the Father. Yes, God the Son. But we miss God the Holy Spirit, which is God the Father and God the Son living in you and me. So when we pray, we should not pray just to God the Father through Jesus' name, but we should pray to God the Father through Jesus' name in accordance with the Holy Spirit. Because this is what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, don't just pray and say, God, I am sad. I am mourning. God, give me comfort. That's not what he's saying here. He's actually saying what you need when you pray is say, God, I'm sad, I'm mourning, give me the comforter, the Holy Spirit. It's not just a one-time gift, and then we got to come again and say, I need comfort again. No, the Spirit lives in us, and when we pray, God, give me comfort, our prayer should be, God, may your Spirit within me comfort me. Be my comforter. Not only that, when we need guidance, you're like, should I take this job? Should I do this? What should I do? You know, how should I discipline the kids this time? How should I do this? You know, all this kind of stuff. We should come not to God and say, God, give me guidance for this situation. We need to pray and say, God, I need the one who guides to move me towards your will. Same is true for strength. We need to pray not just for the strength for the situation, but for the spirit that lives in us to give us the strength. Same for truth. God, I need your truth in this circumstance. God gives us more than just the truth for that circumstance. He gives us the spirit living inside us that teaches all truth. You see why it's good to be able to say when we pray, we pray through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us, and the Holy Spirit gives us all that God would have for us. Every good thing that God has for us is through the Holy Spirit. That would be like going to God and saying, God, I need money. And instead of God just giving you money, he gives you the whole bank. You see the difference? God doesn't just give us the supply. He gives us the source of the supply. God doesn't just give us that what we need for that one instance in our life. He gives us his very presence living in us, which is all that we need. So when we pray, we pray to God the Father through Jesus the Son and through the Holy Spirit who then provides all that God has portioned to us. You see how that works? I mean, that's that's huge stuff right there. And I'll be honest, most of my life I have prayed separate from the Holy Spirit. I've looked at the Holy Spirit as Kyle Eidelman says. Kyle Eidelman says that so many times we look at the Holy Spirit at like the crazy uncle that nobody understands and we don't really know where he's coming from, so we just leave him in the other room, right? Too many times we look at the Holy Spirit like that. I don't understand the Holy Spirit, so then we just leave him out. Francis Chan, author and pastor, said that Too many times we look at the Holy Spirit as the lesser God. Yes, God the Father, God the Son, and oh, Holy Spirit of somewhere over here. But that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that the Spirit is the fullness of God. And when we pray and say, God, I need all the good gifts you have for me, he says, yes, I will live in you. I will live in you. That's the first is the dwelling of the Spirit. The second thing that the Spirit does for us in regards to our prayer life, when we allow the Spirit to take His rightful place in our prayer life, is the Spirit empowers us. The Spirit empowers us. Now, I put in your bulletin several scriptures that kind of reveal, and you can go to those later, but they reveal certain things about the Holy Spirit. 
And just for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and move past those. But, but let, me, let me tell you this. When the disciples heard, when the disciples heard that the Holy Spirit was the gift that the perfect Father was giving, they immediately went to the context of the Old Testament. Because they were trained in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, it says that the Holy Spirit was there and present in creation. The Holy Spirit empowered creation. Not only that, but they knew in the Old Testament that the kings, King David and Solomon, that the Holy Spirit was upon them and empowered them as long as they submitted to the Spirit to do God's will. They were like, wow, that same Spirit that was on David is given to us. That's how we need to pray. But not only that, upon the prophets. Upon the prophets, it says the Spirit was upon them, and they spoke God's word. So these disciples, when they heard this, when they heard the Spirit is the good gift you're given when you pray, they were like, whoa, this is huge. They weren't looking at crazy cousin, Uncle Eddie, whatever his name is. They weren't looking at the lesser God. They were looking at, wow, this Spirit empowers The Spirit moves. But not only that, we know that the Spirit says in Isaiah 61, verse 1, the Spirit is what empowered the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, the Spirit came upon him and empowered his ministry. Isaiah 61, 1 reveals this. And the apostles knew this. It says, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. The Spirit was present in empowering Jesus' ministry. They They were not separate. It wasn't God the Father over here, God the Son over here, and God the Spirit over here. They were one. And should they not be one when we pray? Yes. Yes. I'd like to just reference a couple things that the New Testament reveals about the Holy Spirit. The fact that we are even convicted of sin is by who? The Holy Spirit. The fact that we are brought to faith in Jesus is by who? The Holy Spirit. That's in John 16, 8 and 1 Corinthians 12, 3. That we can even confess Christ as Lord is because the Spirit moves in us. Every spiritual gift is from the Spirit, empowering us. 1 Corinthians 12. In Galatians chapter 5, the fruits of the Spirit. This is what the Spirit produces. So if you are having problems in relationships, if you're having problems in relationships, and your heart is struggling to love, do you know who you need to submit to in prayer for the love of God to fill you? The Holy Spirit. What's the first fruit of the Spirit? Love. If you are overwhelmed with sadness and feel like, my life's a wreck, what do you need to do? Instead of trying to change your life, go to the Holy Spirit and let Him change you to joy. Joy. Maybe some of you need peace. We need to pray. God, may your Spirit produce peace in me. How many of you, like me, have, like, very little patience when it comes to uh, parenting. I, thank, thank you. Some of you will have a support group later. I struggle with patience. Jane's over there, and she's just like, I mean, it takes a lot to get her to the point. Me is a short leash. I'm like, did you just talk back to me? Are we going there? We're going there. Let's go. Okay? I need to pray to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, produce patience. That is a gift from the Spirit. The Spirit empowers that. So many times when we pray, we're like, change my kid before I kill them. (laughs) And instead, we need to pray, God, through your Holy Spirit, give me a patience, give me a joy, give me a kindness, give me your gentleness, give me your faithfulness, give me your self-control, right? That's what the Spirit produces, And not only that, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this, every good thing we have in Christ, everything we have that moves us into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ is done through the Holy Spirit. And again, most of my life I have prayed, 
with the Holy Spirit in another room. We need the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying, you want every good work that God's going to do? Invite the Holy Spirit to be crucial in your prayer life. The Holy Spirit indwells us. The Holy Spirit becomes the comforter, the guide, the one that gives us truth. But the Holy Spirit also empowers us to live faithful lives, lives in which all that is Christ is growing and living inside of us. That's the Holy Spirit. The last thing that we see, and this one I love because sometimes there's too much of me in prayer. The last is this, the Holy Spirit pleads for us. The Holy Spirit pleads for us. When I submit to the Holy Spirit in prayer, the Holy Spirit takes my selfish prayers and conforms them to the will of God. I'll, I'll be honest. Before Jane and I met, there was another woman in my life. I'm serious. I prayed, please, God, let me marry her. I did. She's the one, I was telling God. I came to God and said, God, she's the one. Please, God, please answer this prayer. But I thank God that he doesn't always answer what we want, but he answers according to what we need. Because praise God, Jane is my wife, and I know she's blessed. (laughs) No, I'm the one that's blessed because I'm telling you, God has blessed me so much through Jane and her family. They've been such a huge part of my life, and I've been so blessed by that. And if I would have had my prayers end at me, then they would have never ended at God. But the Holy Spirit, when we pray, we say, God, please, this is on my heart, but I submit to your will, and I submit to your spirit. May your spirit take my prayer and make it one with your will. You see, The Holy Spirit pleads for us. We talked about last week about being an intercessor, remember? An intercessor stands between the one in need and the one with the answer. We are the one in need. God is the one that is the answer. And the Holy Spirit, we're going to look in Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. The Holy Spirit stands in between us and God and submits us our request, our heart, our mind, our life to the will of God when we allow the Holy Spirit to not only conform our prayers but transform us. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul reveals. If you look at Romans chapter 8, let's just jump ahead to verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Look what the Spirit does here. And some of you are sitting there and saying, I'm not convinced, Daryl, the Holy Spirit can still be in another room in prayer. No. Look what the Holy Spirit does. In verse 26, we do not know what we ought to pray for. We don't know. But the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that we cannot express. The Holy Spirit stands between us and God and takes us, not only conforming our prayers and our will to God's, but transforming us as our intercessor. Some of you have intercessors in your life, and praise God for that. You've got people praying for you. I have people praying for me, and I'm grateful. But praise God for the greatest gift that the Holy Spirit stands between me and God. And intercedes for me. That's what it says in verse 27. God who searches our hearts. Knows the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints. In accordance to God's will. The Holy Spirit is praying. And saying God do good in their life. God work in their life. God this is what's best. Not what that knucklehead's asking for. But this is best. And The Holy Spirit connects us to God. So when we pray, we need to pray for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray for the fullness of the Holy Spirit in our life. And then what's the result of the Holy Spirit interceding for us? And verse 29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son. The Spirit changes us. Changes us. That's the power of the Spirit. That's the power of the Spirit. 
I don't know about you, but I need more of the Spirit's indwelling, empowering in my life. I need more of the Spirit standing in the gap for me. And it takes me to submit to the Spirit's presence in prayer. And I don't know about you, but we need more of the Spirit in this church. Because I think so many times we do church without the Spirit. And I think so many times we have our families separate from the Holy Spirit. We have our marriages separate from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of Jesus Christ and God the Father living in us to change us. We need the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, when I was growing up, I heard very little taught about the Holy Spirit. He was literally treated like that crazy uncle. And if you're that crazy uncle, God loves you. Because I'm, I'm that crazy uncle. My niece and nephew look at me like, what is wrong with that guy? But the thing is, is that the Holy Spirit is that gift that we need. That gift in our life, that gift in our marriage, that gift in our family, that gift in our job, that gift in our struggle, that gift in every need. God is saying, Jesus paid for it all, and Jesus lives in you through the Holy Spirit. And when you pray, you pray through Jesus' name, but you pray in accordance with the Spirit. And we need to know that. We need to grow in that. Some of you have not received the Spirit The Spirit is on you, but because you've not given your life to Jesus Christ in faith, repentance, confession, baptism, the Spirit does not live in you. Do not wait. You need the Spirit. Some of you, you have the Spirit, but the thing is, is you've left Him in the other room. Go and get that gift, and every day just open up and say, God, may I be led by your Spirit, may I be in step with your Spirit, may I live by your Spirit, may I pray by your Spirit. And some of you, you've quenched the Holy Spirit because of sin. And it's time that we surrender that to Jesus Christ and allow the Spirit to be the fire inside of us. I'll ask, do you need the Holy Spirit? Okay, some of you are shaking your head. Everybody should be, yes, we need the Holy Spirit. And God wants to give you that Holy Spirit. But you need to decide today How will you live? How will you pray? How will you grow through God's presence living inside of you? Some of you need help. (laughs) That sounds funny, but it's true. Some of you need help growing in the spirit because the church has not done a good job teaching. So if you need help learning how to live in step with the spirit, allow the spirit to produce the fruit, the character of Christ. If you need help learning how to pray, come to someone who is a more mature believer and say, please help me live and pray and grow through the Holy Spirit. And if you've not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior by becoming one in baptism, we encourage you to come. Be filled today and grow in the Spirit. Is this a good word to anybody here today? Yes. We need the fullness of God. Not just God the Father, not just God the Son, but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, all in one, changing us as we surrender every day to that relationship in prayer. Let's stand as we have an invitation time. We're going to sing this song And we're going to sing this song that's simply called Holy Spirit. And if you have a decision to make, we encourage you to come. If you need prayer, we encourage you to come. But this is the time that we can say, God, no longer will I live separate from your fullness. May your spirit dwell and empower, and may your spirit intercede for your glory. Let's sing this song.